Hello and welcome back to INMR and today's podcast I'm going to be talking about how Oliver Glasner has transformed Crystal Palace. I'll be talking about their build-up play, defensive shape and attacking transitions to help you understand how he's taken Palace to new heights in such a short space of time. So straight into it with the low build-up where Glasner sets up in a 4-2-5 so that's where the goalkeeper joins a back three to create a back four and using the goalkeeper is to help create an overload and beat the press. In a high build-up, it's a 3-2-5, so pretty much the exact same, but no goalkeeper. The two midfielders are used to link with the centre-attacking midfielders to create central overloads. Glasner likes his forwards to go high and wide to pull the opposition's backline apart, which enables other players to exploit space. The high volume of them central players in the central area also means that when Palace lose the ball, they can press quickly and not get caught out. Palace like to play a high back line and they do this because it helps counter press when they lose the ball. Having more players close who can win the ball back makes it difficult for the opponents to do anything during the game and build any momentum. Palace always aim to find the centre attacking mids in pockets and due to the overloads in the midfield there's usually always an option. They look for passes that break the lines and will allow the attacking midfielder to receive the ball on the half turn and drive at the defence. Another massive aspect of Palace's approach is numerical advantages. Their front five naturally overloads a back four, which is typical in the Premier League. Palace often switch the ball to create a 2v1 against an isolated fullback. So you can see over here, I believe that's Will Hughes. He's just switching it over so that Tyrant Mitchell and Eze have that 2v1 where they'd be favourites to go on and score. In the final third, Palace aim to attack the half spaces and overlap to create goal scoring opportunities. Once the ball's in a wide area, Palace play the ball into space for teammates to run onto. In this picture, it's essentially an underlapping run, but Palace do use the overlaps as well, and this is in order to keep the opposition guessing. Once again, it's all about creating them 2v1s on the wing. Once the fullback has made the overlapping run and received the ball, they can either play across into the six yard box or they can cut back inside and lay it off on the edge of the box. In terms of their defensive approach, it differs depending on whether Glasner's wanting his side to go with a low press or a high press. In a low press, Glasner sets up in a 5-2-3 mid block. Here they always try to close off any central options and force their opponents wide. It's a very compact shape that is difficult to break down. They're able to remain compact due to the high line which slightly contradicts the idea of a low press but it does work as Palace ensure they aren't left too exposed. They do this by always being side on so if a dangerous ball is played in behind they're ready. In a high press they stay in a 5-2-3 shape and just wait for press triggers such as a bad first touch, bad pass or even a long range pass. Everyone presses as a unit and that starts at the front with Mateta, the rest then follow him and squeeze the pitch to force the opposition wide where there are less passing options. When Palace win the ball back, they counter-attack with a high tempo and attack the spaces between the centre-back and full-back. Because they counter at such a high tempo, they score lots of goals from overload situations, such as the one on screen. Overall, Glasner's modern approach has transformed Crystal Palace very quickly. His emphasis on a well-structured defence and quick transitions has been extremely effective. That is where I'm going to end today's podcast, but there's plenty more that you can go and watch right now. For extra content, be sure to check out my website. Just search ironmrfootball.co.uk to read match reports, live blogs, analysis pieces, and so much more. Finally, INMR is on both Instagram and X, so be sure to follow me on both of those platforms. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.